All right, it's very windy. Good morning. Today, we are in old Colorado City, here to check out Magic Town. It is supposed to be a 3,000 square foot miniature sculpture museum or something. So uh, I'm not really too sure what exactly we're gonna find here, but it should be interesting nonetheless. So uh, let's go check it out. This is what we have in store for us once we get in to the thing here. This is incredible. The fact that somebody even thought to do all this is just, is just too cool. So it's very dark in here, so I don't know how well any of this footage is gonna come out, but I'm gonna do my best. This guy looks like he's like, nope, don't gamble anymore. My gambling days are behind me. And even like upstairs here, you can even see upstairs here, there's even a guy inside. And he's telling a story. And look, even beyond that, there's somebody behind in this window here. I don't even know. Yeah, you see that? There's somebody even behind in the window back there. That is incredible. Man, that's cool. And it's just a fully realized little little town here we've got man covers there's stuff all over the ground and even an alley back here with people moving looks like they're having an argument look that goes all the way back back there this is extremely impressive yes that somebody was able to do something like, like, look at all of the wear and tear even on the sign and on the side of the building it's aged the attention to detail is insane. And look at, this is the scale. Brett's just standing next to it. And the guy that did this put a lot of work into this. So we're gonna go into the museum here, check this thing out. I'm really excited we're here. As we walk up the ramp here, I believe Magic Town officially starts in this room. Michael Carmen was homeless for a little bit. And so it's pretty cool that he was able to take that bad experience and turn it into something like this. And he described it from one of the interviews I watched before we came here. He described this place as Walt Disney meets Norman Rockwell. And I have to say, after being here, I totally understand why, because this is totally like very Americana meets Disney's perfect society that he wanted to build. And it's just, this is, this place is fantastic. At how big this place is and every inch of it has been thought through and planned and sculpted and put together by one person it looks like sesame street in here this is insane this is crazy man this is seriously insane like i'm i'm in awe of this right now i know right i knew this place was going to be really cool and really awesome but i had no idea how cool it was going to be got the grand windsor hotel here and this guy looks pretty bored of his job. But look at this. 
The windows have flyers on them. Look at how aged everything looks. That's the most impressive part to me is how well he's able to paint all of this to make it look so aged. You can really see the detail in these guys when you get really up close. I really hope that you can see some of this. I'm really worried that the light is not gonna be enough in here. But look at the detail on these guys' faces. It is just incredible. The fact that somebody spent time to create this so other people could just walk around in here and see his creation is just very impressive. I'm just completely and utterly fascinated by all of the signs here. I mean, it's insane how weathered they look. And look, it's even got like a little bird nest up here. We have here some people hanging out on the stoop. So inside the bar here, the bartender's giving us a little story. Look at that. How awesome is that? I mean, he even, he even has like uh, Coca-Cola stickers and Visa stickers and everything else around here. On the website, it says that he actually lived as what they called a vagrant on the website for a long time. And a lot of what he has created here has actually been inspired by his time from traveling and not having anywhere permanent to live. And if you're looking to get a tattoo or have your watch repaired or even go to the barber, it's all here, right? In one easy stop. Just as any artist would, signs his own work. And as I've said before, the sheer amount of attention to detail in this place is really incredible. Like, for instance, you can see this pizzeria here, and these guys are down here. There's even pizza and food. This guy's having a good old time drinking his soda. But then you move upstairs, and there's multiple floors here, like this guy standing here. I'm angry at everyone. Presumably eating a pizza from downstairs. But even the floor below him, you look in the window, and this guy's painting up a storm. Look, he's even got different colors on his palette. Brett's taking a bunch of pictures. I can't blame him because, I mean, look at this place. Look at the scale of that. That is so awesome. I have to say, I think my favorite part of all this is the movie theater. It's just so well done. And that's not hurting. Kind of hard to see, but even the newspapers have stuff printed on him, including his name. You know, it's pretty cool how busy this place is. So if you're interested, there's an entire hallway here filled with pictures of the man himself. Look at how proud he is of that. And it's hard to blame him because this place is pretty impressive. So as you can see, this scene switches. Right like that. So the way he's accomplishing this is there's a mirror right here. And the scene you're seeing now is actually around the corner. That is just, oh, master of perspective. I'm trying. I'm trying, but it's not working. You know, I remember when this is just one clay building. This town's gotten too big. Uh, it's seriously, it's bigger than all the smells. 
I was gonna do where you, you'd look in and you'd see this men's restaurant in his old bar, uh -huh. and you, you get up close, and then I was gonna put some of those um, uh, in the men's rooms and the urinals. Oh, so the little all, cakes? Yeah, yeah, the little cakes. <laughs> I was gonna put them down there, and guys are going. So, and so this was all just, just inspired by like travel and stuff like that? I was a bum. Excuse me, sorry. For many years, I was a uh, vagabond. I was two years in Central and South America, and San Francisco, and the LA Wino districts. And so this is kind of a sculptural autobiography. Okay. Because um, I, I had no idea what I was gonna do, still right. don't. Uh, there's so much more to be done, just holographically, but with the mirrors and the, and the characters. I'm sculpting characters upstairs right now. Oh, wow. And, uh, so this is also your shop then, too? Oh, yeah. No, I live up, I own the building. We produce out of the, the basement, uh, uh, leased to second floor uh, artists. Right. And then my third floor is all mine. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. My, you gotta have your own space. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And just, I've never been able to not be around my work. That's why well, I reproduce it. Part of you. Well, I don't understand how painters and sculptors could sell their one of a kinds. Right. I did it for, I missed hundreds of pieces that I miss to this day. And, I, but I wanted to collect my own stuff, so I started making well, molds. Yeah. Well, two things happened, several things happened. One, I get to keep my own pieces. Right. Got to make a hell of a lot more money <laughs> and didn't have to work as hard. So how long exactly did it take you to put all of this together total, roughly? Probably 40 years. Oh my goodness. I probably, and I'm still working on it. I probably, I, I can't remember when I started it, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Went through I, two wives trying to explain that uh, I don't know when I don't have to do it. <laughs> you know? Well, I read that this was put in in 1975. Is that correct? That sounds about right. Yeah? That sounds about right. Okay. I'm not sure it got down here in 75, because it took me quite a few years to to make all the parts and pieces, bricks, doorknobs, yeah. overhead, and all that yeah. before could act. So that's, that's probably a route, the, right? I, the thing I think I'm most impressed by is how you age everything. How exactly are you accomplishing that? Oh, it's very difficult. <laughs> I tell you, my son and I, we, we, got, we got to get the bricks and everything aged. It took water pistols and put water in, and burn umber coloring in it. And we sit back and we shoot the, the up at the top really? and let it drain down naturally. That's so okay. It was, so it actually sort of emulates rain a little precisely. bit the way it's coming down. Exactly. Oh, that's crazy. And then I would send, you know, uh, 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 steel wool some of it off, you know, until it got down. But if it was hard, I wasn't going to do it. Right. And it seems to work for me. I mean, um, it's added to it for sure. I don't, I don't try to outthink it. Never did. Never had any idea what it was going to go. Still don't. It's so off. It's funny how often you hear that in any form of art. Don't overthink it. Oh, oh I, God. I, I don't okay. Care if it's music, I don't care if it's photography, sculpting, okay. whatever. No, that's it. I hear it all the time. Because if you if you think, well, I'm going to do exactly this, you're going to get here and you're going to go, wait a minute. No, man, I'm going to go this way. And then, yeah, and this way. So it's a matter of just Letting listen, it drive you. listening to your inner mind. Yeah. You know, and that's the lazy man's art, at least for me anyway, because then I don't have to think that. Hard. But it works. That's it the works. thing. It's like, who cares if it's lazy? It works. Nope, that's it. That's it. And I base most of my success, and this is going to sound funny, but it's true, it's too dumb to know better. I just didn't know I wasn't supposed to do this. I was down in South America as a bum, making good money. And went in, talked my way into the School of Fine Arts just for free. They'd fire my little heads and little figures in their, their kilns for free. And I'd take them around and sell them all on the streets. Well, I didn't, when I got back to Dallas, I did the same thing. Knocked on doors and sold them door to door. Never went the art, artsy craftsy trail. Yeah. Uh, you didn't have some try to have galleries or nope, anything like nope. that? Nope, they're, nope. They're, they're a rip off. They're why, they're why you can't name me three painters in this country. That's but you can name me writers point. and directors and, and filmmakers yeah. and, and uh, musicians, but you can't name me sculptors or painters. They, they have one of a kind. Uh, uh, and, and they're playing another game. And I'm playing a modern game. I'm going to reproduce this stuff. Yeah. That was amazing. That was awesome. We just met the guy that created all this and he talked to us for like five minutes. That was fantastic.
in a world of creating everything on a computer and everything is digital in a file, it's really, really refreshing to see somebody creating something with their hands and then sharing that creation with everyone else. And it was really cool to meet Michael Garman, the guy that created all of this in the middle of this place. And he was so, he was so cool and he was so nice about letting me film him and just talking to us for a few minutes. That was, I mean, I honestly couldn't have asked for a better experience coming to this place for the first time. Okay, wow. Honestly, if you were in Colorado Springs, you like cool, kitschy, weird, awesome, handmade stuff, you have to check out Magic Town. We were lucky enough to actually be able to interview the guy that created all that stuff because we met him in there and it was super, super, super cool. And uh, I honestly, I can't oversell that place enough. So if you're in Colorado Springs, check it out. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit that sub button if you like this and I will see you guys next time. Mike the Finder out. See you.